Now that Canyon Clash is in game, that's Alliance versus Alliance in a Canyon-like format, I want to give you a look at the very best teams you can possibly make. What are the best combinations? What's the best equipment? And what are the best talents that you can use to get more wins, not only for you, but also for your Alliance? I mean, there's now gems at stake. So stick around in this video for all the things you need to know. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chisco Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And it's no secret that because I'm a content creator, I get attacked a lot in Canyon. So I've spent a little bit of time in order to make videos, in order to do better in Canyon, learning how to make a successful defense. And as you may know, I'm in KVK right now against some of the strongest kingdoms in the game. That's 1960 and 1093. And that series, by the way, has been crazy with all the drama. So be sure to subscribe if you want to make sure to stay current with the latest Canyon stuff, but more importantly, the latest KVK drama because there's no shortage of it. And look, I can prove to you, proof is in the pudding, that I can get defensive holds against the strongest kingdoms in the game, all right? So currently, I have not pushed up my rank because I'm just kind of chilling to make this video. But in this video, we're going to do several things and be sure to use the timestamps to navigate to whatever it is that you need. First and foremost, we're going to talk about the actual best combinations that I think you can use as of the time of this recording, and I'll extrapolate a little bit to like, hey, if you don't have this combination, use that combination instead. So I'll give you a variety of commanders you can use. We'll also just get a quick look at what I think some of the best talents are and specific equipment items that you can use to perform better, and we'll go in and, of course, do a few battles here um, in we could also do Sunset Canyon, but primarily I want to try to push in Lost Canyon against teams I have never fought before, all right? Just to show that the principles are sound and you can apply these. So if we get a look at what these best teams are using, there are some very consistent themes. In fact, uh, this is almost the best team you can make here. There is one exception, which is that Herman Prime makes it better. So what is in the best Canyon team right now? You're going to use Guan and Skippy. And it's amazing how long this has been around as a combo that just absolutely decimates. Another damage march that you're going to use um, is going to be Nevsky and Joan. I have found this to perform better than Huo, despite the fact that Huo gets a wicked heal when you defeat a march. Uh, look, Nevsky just seems to be doing better as a single target damage dealer. I suspect that's because when he's attacked, if he's uh, expertise, you have a chance to gain health. And of course, area of effect damage and b buffs from Joan is just completely OP. And your damage march here should be Zuge Leong and Herman Prime, ideally. Uh, if you don't have the Herman Prime yet, because he just came out, Okay, no worries. Um, and then your pure tank marches, and there are two of them. Your pure tank marches are going to be Trajan with Mulan, and then Liu Che with Constantine. And my God, are these survivable marches. So if we go down the list here, we can see that the top players are using these combinations, and there really is not much diversity or variety to what you'll see in the top. Now, when you see a team like this, that has, for example, Huo um, with Honda. That is actually, in my opinion, a team that I probably can attack and beat because it's not as strong as the extra infantry. So the weirdness here is that like, if you want a crazy Canyon team, you probably need two infantry marches and a leadership march, which most people are not going to do because like, that's probably not what you're using in the field, and that's probably not equipment that you're making. But remember, we're talking about the best of the best, and we'll extrapolate to some other combos, okay? So as we go through here, we can see, yeah, I mean, the meta is pretty standardized here as to what this ought to look like. And it is interesting to see a lot of Huo with Honda from 60GT. I suspect that it's because they are less interested in infantry in general and just have the equipment to support that really strong offlane. And look, hey, if you have the extra cav equipment, I totally get it. Okay, I totally get it. Here we see Boudicca Asher Benepal. I do not think this is a meta squad. I think this would be vulnerable to being attacked. Uh, they are, they've definitely mixed up several things here. And we'll look at their defensive configuration in just a minute. So now that we've aligned, I'm like, okay, what Chiskul is pointing out is 
probably the best that you can do. I mean, bro, if it's rank one from GT and they're holding, like, hello, can you do better? Um, let's get a quick look at talents and some of the things you need to know about like what do you do with these commanders. So we'll start with Guan Yu talents. Just a quick look here. And I cover these builds in many of my videos. I've learned people are like constantly asking for builds. So here's your Guan Yu build. And if you're going to use Guan Yu in the front line, the thing you need to remember is that the blue infantry shield is really good. I actually use them in the back line. But if you are going to commit extra materials to getting more wins in Canyon, the blue infantry shield is super high value and money where my mouth is i use it on my trajan march i use it on my liu chat okay but because i'm using guan as a dps march and i now have this to tier three this is really really good i will also point out that the new iconic tiers of equipment are really insane for canyon extra troops is just absolutely monster that also will lead us to to a conversation about accessories which we'll get to in a minute so your zuge leong talents should look like this this is true if you're using Esong as well, or if you're using Boudicca Prime, all right? You really want to generate Rage to go first. This makes a huge difference in this game mode. Wedge Formation, of course, would be the pick for both Guan Yu and also Zuge Liang. Um, and then from here, Nevsky, Talent Build, very standard stuff, okay? This is the build you would use for Open Field as well. And in terms of equipment... Um, I happen to have a dagger here, mostly because it's got the iconic and I'm stacking him in a DPS lane. But for the most part, all your damage marches, you pretty much just want ring and horn. Like that's pretty much the way to jam out the most damage possible, depending on, again, your like crits and your iconics. But ring and horn on your damage marches is totally the jam. And once we start talking about tanky marches, here's my Liucha. And here's where I've got my lucky coin. Lucky Coin is some really elite tech that goes with the Constantine. Why do you do this? The Lucky Coin has amazing synergy with Constantine's fourth skill. When you are getting shielded, you um, are reducing the skill damage you take very meaningfully for the next three seconds, and that happens once you get low. So the Liucha um, Constantine combo, or really wherever you put your Constantine, you're going to want to use this lucky coin to go with it. So good. And of course, I happen to have a greatest glory um, because I'm garrisoning with that. Very powerful. Uh, tier 5, crit iconic. Good to go. And uh, talents over here I can show you. Boom. Attack tree. This is what you would set up if you're using a Liu Chet primary. And with your Trajan. Boom. You've got that shield. This is a disaster for equipment. I've covered this in like 100 videos. I don't know if I'm out $10,000 or if I'll get to use this, but it was a lot of a lot of materials and patterns committed to this. And like, I hope this continues to be best in slot for infantry. If not, I'll have to figure out if I switch to the leadership set or what I do. Um, but I'm currently using hollow square formation and I want to talk about this. So the weirdness here with canyon and infantry is that the leadership set is pure mixed, whereas the infantry set is all in on infantry, and you do probably want to stack the infantry. And the weirdness of the, the sort of formations and armaments is that those also are stats for specific troop types. So if you want to do really well in Canyon, you kind of need to focus one troop type. Well, there isn't a way to do all troop types, I should say. Um, if you want to do one troop type, I think infantry is the way to go. And you can see I've committed pretty heavily to that but anyways leadership uh, equipment's quite a conundrum talents for a leadership commander so if you're doing swap outs for some of these commanders and some of these marches let's just look at where they are in the canyon lineup and where you could put them so if we get a look at my defense all right we can see that i've got the Nevsky and Joan up in front. Now, most people aren't going to have this many infantry marches, quite frankly. Uh, so if you can't field this many infantry marches, right, what you'll often see is an extra cavalry march. And we see that 60 GT is literally doing that. They're using their Huo and they're pairing in the off lane with Honda. So some cheap substitutions that you could consider is Mehmed for the Honda Tadakatsu. Um, you could look at XY or William as decent additions to your Canyon lineup. I would say William is a preference over XY. And for your infantry, if you don't have all these infantry, 
Another commander you could consider is Sargon. Sargon fills a pretty cool role of being single target damage. In this game mode, however, area of effect damage really is outstanding. Now, with that said, the Trajan Mulan situation is so good. I mean, you do not have to have a max Mulan to be using Mulan and Canyon and get serious value. That is because of the museum buffs. So most people probably should just be using Mulan if they have the museum buff on her, if you're going to try to field one of these leadership marches. And if you're not going to try to field a leadership march because you're like, bro, I did not do Trajan, I only use Ethel as a secondary, um, then you just put in the front line something as tanky as you can muster. But definitely one of the all-stars of Canyon and must be in your most tanky position, um, ideally, has got to be this Constantine. Constantine is super freaking goaded. Even like 5511 with the museum buff, he's going to be okay. And if you're wondering like, bro, this is some end game stuff. What is the museum? When you get to KVK season three, you'll get this building over here. This is the museum. Uh, it gives you some extra buffs uh, and you use a special currency to unlock them. And they go a really long way. Like I was describing, you could get uh, Mehmed, the double relic over here, get a ton of stats, Mulan. I'm using this, right? 20% health, 15% skill damage taken reduction. I mean, if you're in the early game, like, bro, like, yeah, you're going to use Minamoto. If you double relic him, an extra 60% of stats, and that defense on there is good. So there are lots of great substitutions that you can make, but we need to go back and just study this formation for a bit. And let me explain some Canyon mechanics, all right? Now, when you are on defense, Okay, your troops swing up. So what does that mean? When my troops march forward, when I'm on defense, Guan Yu is going to swing up. Zuge Leong is going to swing up. When you're attacking, they swing down. So the goal here is to position these troops in the way that you want. Do you want a march to avoid damage? on defense, put that one up top. I'm using a lot of attack gear on my Guan Yu, a very weird choice that I made specifically for Ark, but like the six piece set on Guan Yu, I don't want to be taking damage. I can't take damage on this March, man. So I put it up top and it hits hard and it doesn't get hit as by as much area of effect damage. Zuge Leong and Isong, I'm basically throwing that into the middle of the enemy and I'm AOEing everything. So I take a lot of damage and I deal a lot of damage. That's the trade-off. Now, I've aligned to a top formation specifically to be able to protect my Guan in this way. And this works really, really well. The other thing this does is that often you'll see Liu Chen march up. And because, remember, attackers swing down, what's going to happen is Trajan's going to march forward, okay? And their attacking march is going to swing down over here. And I'm going to be getting them with area of effect damage with my Liu Chen, all right? So... This, of course, depends on how they attack, but if we just get a look here, um, let's see here. This player attacked. I mean, we can look at what they did. Looks like I have an overwhelming defensive victory, so I'm actually really curious how they attacked here. Um, you'll see, ideally, my Liu Che is even covering my northern lands with area of effect damage. Let's see how this works out. Oh, interesting. So they decide to not let me do that and just line up in the bottom. This is an interesting attacking tactic, and make notes of this. So if he didn't put his troop down here, my Liu Che would be up over here, and I'd be hitting his Huo, okay? Now, you can see my E song that I threw into the mix here is just area, doing area effect damage to everything, um, and I clean up top lane because I've, I've basically got more damage. Like, I have three marches of skill damage hitting his top lane, because he's not getting AoE from Sargon over here, and he's not getting AoE from Huo over here. I mean, maybe the secondaries, but it's obviously not enough. And you can see why Trajan in this game mode is just god tier. Even though I'm not using Echelon Formation, which I should have mentioned earlier is the goaded formation, you just need to pick the formation that your Trajan lives the longest. More important than buffing your team forever um, or, or buffing your team better with Trajan is buffing for as long as possible. Like if Trajan lives, I'm in a really good spot. Here you can see another alt team here where they've swapped out some of the meta things you would expect to see to run three cavalry. So like presumably this player has a very cavalry focused lineup. So we can get a look at their attack on me here. 
and we can see, ooh, okay, okay, let's see if my Huo does the thing. Will it line up? Looks like in this case it won't. So this player has opted to have his Nevsky run faster. And one thing that you can take away from this is that you may have noticed I have a siege unit in several of these marches. The siege unit is controlling my physical position when I get in into the when I meet the enemy. Okay. So the siege unit makes me march slower. And as soon as it dies, which it will instantly once I make contact with the enemy. That siege unit is no longer in the march, so skills that require full infantry or full cavalry or whatever still are going to work. So um, this offlane just absolutely decimates the Nevsky. Let's see if we can find maybe a tougher opponent. I mean, dude, this guy, yeah, 192 million power, 19 billion kill points. That, that's that got to be a pretty legit roster here. Let's see how my defensive lineup works here. And by the way, I, like, do not have insane armaments on my Trajan. Like, they're, they're like, fine. But, like, I have not worked on armaments specifically for my Canyon team. I've actually mostly excluded that and just worked on my Rally and, like, a, like a little bit on my field, right? But if we just look at how this fight goes, they're attacking in a 4-1 configuration. Now, 4-1 is kind of interesting. This is actually really bad for me that my off lane has lived so long because my troops march into this and I'm absolutely getting raffle stomped by his AOE here and I have no rage generated. So the weirdness of having a better off lane than your enemy is that it actually comes back to bite you defensively at times because in, in, in this case, he's able to turn on me with full rage bars and he's already doing AOE skill damage to me as I've walked over. So that is a very viable attack strategy to go four um, against one. And and like, it didn't work out for him here, uh, but it easily could have. And it puts me at a pretty major disadvantage. Now, obviously I want the tanky off lane for most situations, but what it points to is the fact that like, there's often a counter for what your enemy is doing. So now what we can do is we can go and we can do some attacks. And I don't know how high I can hit here. It looks like it's in the mid 20s. So we'll hit someone in the mid-20s. People are going to think, oh, you're picking someone in particular. No, I'm not. Um, this team should be very difficult for me, although it's got a double cavalry, which is definitely not meta. So I take it back. We can hit this team, and I think the double cav is going to be really weak to me. So here's how I attack in Canyon, okay? I use my Constantine to soak their tanky lane. So up top, they've just got really big damage swinging in, right? So Constantine is just going to hold those guys off for as long as I can. Trajan is going to come in and match their Trajan. Wherever you put Trajan, it needs to be against their weakest damage um, because you want him to live for a long time and stack his defense. If he pop, if they pop your Trajan really fast, you're Dunsky. Um, now, he's going to have a lot of damage on me with the Nevsky William, like a lot of damage. So... That is going to be pretty pretty detrimental to me here. But because he's got a Huo Joan offlane, I'm going to melt that, and then I'm just going to clean up the Trajan, and it's just going to snowball completely in my favor, okay? So we're going to watch that happen now. And in my perfect world, if he is not anchored, did he anchor? He did not anchor his cavalry. So because he does not have a siege unit, I'm really going to wreck him with the Zuge Leong. So he's going to hit my Zuge Leong with area of effect damage, but I kind of don't care. My goal here is to free up my my um, two stack to then swing in on the Trajan. I am very impressed with his Trajan's tankiness. The, dude, he must have, oh my God, he must actually have crit leadership gear with Iconics. His Trajan was so tanky. And th this fight illustrates just how much I have not worked on my Trajan for canyon survivability. Like I said, I didn't work on, on Trajan armaments. And like you really see the lack of attentiveness to the Trajan on my part with no iconic crystals and no um, no special armaments for the right formation. That that just like really shows there. That, that like really shows. His Trajan was insane. Okay, now this positions me to uh, attack number one. I will lose to number one. But I will show you what this looks like just to show you how insane this configuration can be. So this is the number one configuration in like, I mean, bro, would, do, which kingdom do you think's got a better Canyon lineup than 1960? 
This has to be one of the best Canyon lineups in the game right now. And I want to point out that his Trajan has 132,000 troops. So what has he done? What he is doing with his Trajan is he has gone in and he is um, using the Ancient Stratagem's accessory. It's an epic accessory and it gives you 4,000 extra troops. Trust me, in Canyon, that thing is so good. You can also see he's got a lot of troop count on all his marches, and he's put his Herman Prime into the protected position. Remember, this protected position cannot be easily hit with skill damage, and I really love this. Um, that is the way to use your Herman Prime. You do not want to throw it into danger. You want to keep that thing safe as can be. So really great play there, I think, um, and it's going to be angled up and just absolutely decimating me with these skill damage taken debuffs. I mean, I am going to get absolutely raffle stomped by this guy, but let's make it happen. Now, I'm going to try to run the attack in two different ways. The first way I'll run it is just the standard attack that I would make, and this will help us gauge the strength of his team overall. I expect it's going to be insane. What are we even talking about? But we'll try it the standard way, and then I'll show you how I would normally attack a team like this to try to get a little edge. So let's just see what happens. Like I said, these are Canyon teams I have never fought before, okay? So what happens here? We rush in on his Liu Cha. I am going to be able to get good skill damage in from Zuge and Isong onto his Liu Cha. Will it be, oh my God. I am shredding his Liu Cha. Interesting. Oh, but he already killed my Trajan. So this match is basically over at this point. Once my Trajan is dead, I would assume it's like we're in GG territory. I'm actually surprised that my Liu Cha is doing so well, but I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, I might actually just win, which would sh truly shock me. Uh, okay. Chess school just wins. Wow. So, uh, yeah, my Canyon advice is actually got to be pretty decent if I just took out one of the top teams in the game. GG. There it is. And that's why I said, oh, we'll just run it the way I would like standard attack, and then we'll see if I need to do anything special. So there, there we are. Number one, achievable against 1960, which is insane. Um, and I'm probably going to get it attacked a lot. Uh, he already attacked me to take his rank back. Literally, I'm not streaming. Like, bro, did you just have the game open? Hello? Wait. Huh? It says I lost rank. It it says 24 and rank one. And maybe if I back out all the way. Dude, these 1960 guys are actually insane. Like, the game doesn't even know what rank I am anymore. Dude, what what is this? Does, does 1960 have like an auto retake feature enabled? If I lose rank, just auto capture that rank. Well, the great news is we can see how my team works defensively. And you can see he absolutely wrecked me, by the way. Um, he's got five marches left, which is like... That is total domination. So let's see what happened. Um, he laned up against me. So he's basically saying, whatever, bro, I'll beat you in a fair fight. Um, which, uh, yeah, I mean, his gear's got to be better than mine. His, certainly his armaments have got to be better than mine. Um, so let's see how that goes. So he takes his Guan, which is interesting, and he puts it behind the Liu Cha. And he's trying to just have my off lane waste its time down here. So this is why he probably put his Liu Cha up a lane. There's like pros and cons to moving around the Liu Cha here. Um, I might try emulating his defense and moving the Liu Cha up. The disadvantage of that is that um, in the 4v1 situation, and this is like really nerdy, but in the 4v1 situation, it's more likely that my off lane will outlast his and then I'm going to walk into the situation where like, He's got freaking full rage bars AoEing the hell out of me. The attacker does. But yeah, no, that very clean attack here. So, I mean, I don't want this guy to think I'm being a jackass and just like hit him over and over. So for the sake of the video, let's hit another GT player. Okay, it's at Leopard. I'm probably going to lose. Um, so Leopard obviously has to have better equipment than me. Obviously has to have um, better armaments than me. Like, what are we even talking about? Like, hello? I know my stuff's really good, but like, for those that don't know, 52 billion kill points and 500 million power, okay? Just just like, 
220 million dead troops, just for perspective, all right? Let's keep some perspective. And we'll also see if they have auto recapture their ranks enabled. That's not actually a thing. I'm just being silly. So um, I do like that he has, I think, arch formation on his Trajan. Or is that wedge? Wait, is he wedging? So what I think he's doing, maybe, is he either doesn't realize he has the wrong formation or more likely he's just saying, look, I have insane armaments for this formation and that's what I'm going to go with. That's what I'm trying to do over here. My, my best option is hollow square in this instance. And so I use the hollow square just because it's the best that I have. And so I think I would assume Leopard has realized the same thing, which is like, hey, look, if I just have good armaments, I'm good to go. Um, better than having the right formation, but not good enough armaments. And who is working on their echelon anyways, right? So if I run this attack, his Liuche is going to run up, um, but I might actually be able to get him with my Zuge Leong AoE. So this could be okay. I mean, look, let's be real. I expect to lose. I expect my Trajan's going to die first, and then it's going to snowball. And I think his Liu Chez is just going to be insanely tanky. But let's just run it and see how it goes, all right? We swing into Leopard. And because he didn't anchor here, he is going to get AoE onto my Zuge Leong. But I'm, oh my god, dude, look, my Trajan is already melting. I'm, oh my god, my Trajan is just dead, bro. There's a couple reasons why my Trajan is just dead here. The first is that he's got better damage onto me. Like, the Nevsky Joan is just going to shred. My offlane is doing great, but I don't think it's going to offset the fact that I'm getting wrecked over here. It might, but I don't think so. So my offlane is dead, which means I probably just lose at this point. I don't quite have enough gas in the tank on these two marches to take out his three. Um, and he's also got the Herman Prime, which is, like, honestly just better, right? So, um, my, like I said, my biggest weakness here is the Trajan. And it's because I don't have leadership gear. I have infantry gear, crit leadership. And I'm terrified of putting Iconics on it. So, um, what I can do just to showcase an alternate way to attack is that I can hit Leopard again. And, like, not, it's fully not personal. This is, like purely for the sake of the video to show an alternate way to attack that might perform better, but might not, quite frankly. Um, so if we get a refresh here on rank two, if I can get it, hello? Wait, can I attack Leopard? There we go. All right. Um, fully not personal, like just to showcase an alternate attack route here. Um, what I can do is I can change around the way that I'm dealing damage. All right. So the advantage of doing something like this is that now I'm going to put way more pressure on his Trajan. Um, way more pressure on his Trajan. But my Zuge Leong with Esong is going to get evaporated. And I've like seen this many times. So uh, I'm going to have a lot of pressure on him. But I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, I think I'm just going to get melted. And the I'm basically not going to really have an effective offlane situation to deal with his Liu Cha. I mean, I could just... Another way I could run this is like I could go Liu Cha on Liu Cha here. But I don't think I want to do that. The reason I don't want to do that is because my Liucha is insanely tanky. So I, I imagine that's like not something I want to mess with. And I still think I want to leave the anchor on my Nevsky so that I can get the Trajan buffs. But let's just see what happens here. Could be that I want to be down here and avoid um, having my Guan Yu get hit by his Liucha's damage. But let's uh, let's see. Maybe I can even get... AOE damage from my Joan onto his Trajan. Let's find out. Let's see what happens. I probably won't get AOE onto his Trajan. That that I mean, I probably won't. It is possible, but nah, I don't think so. So now I've got more damage onto his Trajan, but even still, it's not enough. Oh, I, actually, I'm going to beat his Trajan first. But I told you that my Zuge Leong was just going to get obliterated. And look at that. It just evaporated, man. And, like, my gear's really good on that march. Like, really, really, really good. So this is an alternate attack route that, like, obviously isn't going to work here. 
So the original way that I ran that attack was definitely better. Um, it'd be very easy for me to improve my Canyon team and suddenly be winning a ton. Um, and even in this situation, be winning. And what is that simple thing? It's, well, it's going iconic on my leadership set. If I went iconic on this set, that just instantly changes things. Um, and right now I have a ring on here, which is really not great. Um, I could explore other options like maybe dagger, but then it gets weird to what do I put on that other march? Like without getting in all the nuance of the accessory choices, ring is definitely not the best choice. Uh, ancient stratagems, if I wanted to commit epic materials would be a better choice. But I think this gives you like a pretty good overview of the canyon meta now and like even on my restart account i can show you kind of what i use on a less powerful but like still pretty damn good account <laughs> by the way i have seven iconic crystals on my main account like i could instantly put the iconic crystals on that leadership set and you'd better believe that i mean what are we talking about four eight twelve 16 extra base stats, right? We got legs, 20 base stats, right? We got legs, we've got boots, we've got chest, we've got helmet uh, and gloves. Like, yeah, that that goes a long way. Um, that goes a long way. Uh, but whatever, let's get a look here. Uh, we go to Canyon. Uh, in my restart kingdom, I'm 13. And you can see my money where my mouth is. I'm using basically the same sort of a lineup. I have Echelon on Trajan because my armaments are just really not great on this account. So it's like, that's the best I got. I may as well just use Echelon. I'm still using Trajan with Mulan here. Um, over here, the Liu Che, like I've, I've got him in the offlane and I'm using Constantine, but my Constantine's not maxed. So even though ne like neither Mulan or Constantine are maxed, I'm using them. And I think that's correct. Like when I switched to the Constantine strategy of having him somewhere in my lineup, uh, I started doing better. And I even did a couple rerolls on my Constantine skills to end up on 5-5. Five, five. It was originally 1-4. And then I got another skill on Constantine. So it became 5-5-2-4 five, five, is what it is. My Mulan, bro, it's so close. 5-5-4-5. Five, five, five. I am like, I am what, 31 sculptures away from a Max Mulan? So, I mean, uh, 722 keys. I might be able to get there. I may just wait until I'm entering KVK to do that, though. Or maybe I'll wait for the next Alliance mobilization because there's a quest to open gold keys. And if you didn't know that, whew, that gold key quest is like the easiest Alliance mobilization points of my life. Oh, yeah. Um, and like I said, I've tried different commanders to swap in. Sargon, like, does not do as well. Um, Huo does not do as well. The reason you see them in the lineups is because people just have the gear they have. They have the armaments and inscriptions they have, and they want to take advantage of those, and that just makes a ton of sense. Um, Ethelfled is something you'll see in a lot of early game uh, stuff, but in the late game, like, obviously, it's going to fade out, right? God, I remember Ethel Esong back in the days. Those were the days, my friends. Uh, Charles Martel and Richard I. Good callouts for early game. Those are super, super, super strong early game infantry alternatives. If you want to go all the way back to like the very beginning, okay, you're going to be using stuff like Sun Tzu in the early, early, early game, right? Um, even like Julius Caesar can do some pretty cool things with the extra extra troop capacity, although you're not going to have the skills on him really in the early game. Um, yeah, Sun Tzu's, Sun Tzu's really good. Um, also Skippy, not not legendary Skippy, but the epic Skippy. Where do I have him? Over here. This dude's pretty good in Canyon too for a front line. Very good to throw into sort of the enemy that's dealing a lot of damage over here. Super powerful. If you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. This is a uh, not as quick as I thought it would be chronicle of the Canyon meta <laughs> as of, oh, I'm about to hit 
my my AP over here. As of uh, January going into February of 2024. Can you believe it's 2024? This is insane. Throw a like on the vid. Consider subscribing if you want more Canyon updates. Alternatively, check the card in the end screen if you're looking for like a Canyon clinic that really breaks down the, the bare bones of like, hey, here's the things you need to know about attack and defense and, you know, putting a siege unit and all that stuff. Alternatively, if you haven't seen that Canyon Clash is around the corner, card will be in the end screen for that one as well. Dude, Canyon Clash? That looks fun to me.